Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now, today I'm going to tell you about what is CNC. If you landed on this video, you probably heard the term somewhere and want to know something about it, or you know already a little bit, but you want to know more. So in this two-part video, I'm going to tell you all about CNC from the very start, what it is, um, why it exists, what you can use it for, to like more detailed things about how you personally will use it and the different steps in especially CNC machining. So the term C and C stands for computer numeric control. And what this basically means is that it is some sort of machine that is controlled by a computer. When people talk about CNC, they most commonly refer to CNC routers or machines. These are machines that can cut out something controlled by a computer. So you generate some code on a computer and then it cuts out whatever shape you want. Now, CNC doesn't just apply to CNC machines. CNC is basically anything that like moves around and is controlled by a computer. It could also be a, a CNC laser cutter or a CNC plasma or many other applications where some sort of computer is controlling a couple of axes that move around and then do something. But for the purpose of this video and further depth, I'm gonna refer to CNC as just CNC routers. Now, in CNC machining, there are mainly two different parts, like kind of two different subjects. Either you have two or two and a half D machining, or you have 3D machining. Now, in these two categories, the two and two and a half D machines, they usually have two or three axes and they can cut basically any shape either completely through and cut it out or like halfway through and make a hole, but they don't do like organic shapes. In 3D machining, however, you have three or more axes that can be like five, four, five, or even six axes. And there, while well, you often start with a normal two or two and a half D toolpath, you then move into three dimensions and instead of just moving on the same plane, your, your tool head is going to move around and maybe even your workpiece is going to turn in more complex multi-axis workflows. Now, while of course 3D machining gives you the flexibility of do, being able to do much more, it also is immensely more complicated to program and the machines have to be more capable as well. But thanks to easy software like Fusion 360 and other more modern CAM software, which I'm going to cover later, 3D machining has gotten much more accessible to the mainstream consumers and you guys as well. And if you want to see a bit of 3D machining, I've made a video about that that you can, can check out in the eye up here in the corner. Now for CNC machining, you can use many, many different CAD programs. Now, there are also kind of two different types. There is 2D CAD and 3D CAD. Now, just because your CAD model is a 2D image doesn't mean that your object in the end is gonna be just 2D necessarily. Now, with 2D, the most common format is DXF. So if you hear something about a DXF file, it generally is a 2D vector file. The big difference between vector and vector files and your normal image files is that instead of having pixels where they can have a color, you have defined lines with coordinates. So they have an infinitely higher resolution because they don't really have a resolution. They go from point to point and if you zoom in, it still is a line. That what well, that's what makes vector graphics very useful for CNC machining because we don't want some pixel form. We want a line that is infinitely small, but we just make it a certain width so we, we can see it. Now you can 
use either a professional CAD software to create your DXF files or you could also just use Adobe Illustrator or any other vector graphics program and then go through another program to, to convert this image. But one big disadvantage of 2D CAD is that you always have to think in your head how your end product is gonna look like. Because while you maybe have two squares within each other, maybe the inner square is gonna be just a pocket inside of a bigger square. But in a 2D model, it's just two squares on top of each other. So you can't really see that. That's where 3D CAD shines very nicely as you can see the object that you're gonna cut later already in three dimensions. And so you know how it's gonna look like. Now, the software I like to use is Fusion 360. It's from Autodesk, but it is a bit newer than AutoCAD and has some different features. Me personally, I like it quite a lot better. It also has integrated cam and simulations and many other tools, so you don't have to switch between many different programs like you would have if you used AutoCAD. Now, just like most programs of Autodesk, it would usually cost a monthly fee, but if you are just a hobbyist and don't earn much money on your hobby, then you get it for free. So this is a very great asset, as hobbyists like us can use professional-grade software without having to pay thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, you've heard me bring up the term CAM quite a bit in the last couple of sentences. And CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. So it's basically the way between your 3D model or 2D model to your machine doing something and creating a part. Because CNC machines are very stupid if you look at it. They only accept commands that say the specific coordinates that they have to go to and then the next co coordinate and the next coordinate. They can't do anything else. So somehow we need to convert our image or model into simple instructions that the machine can understand. Now, back in the day, when it first started, you had to do this mostly by hand, which is okay if you want to just make something flat and go over it with the tool once. But if you have a complex shape, modern cam can be many thousands of lines and you wouldn't want to code this yourself. So that's where cam software comes in. Now, Fusion 360 has already integrated CAM, but there are also so many dedicated CAM programs. These often are quite expensive, so going with Fusion is a very good idea if you're just a hobbyist, as you get it for free and still have a lot of options. Now, the term 2D, 2.5D and 3D machining, that's also gonna come up in CAM, because that's basically where you gonna have to make the model into the toolpath. Now, instead of Fusion, you have 2D and 3D. Now, the 2D it technically is like 2.5D because it's not just a 2D two-axis thing, but also has height to it, but it doesn't do complex 3D shapes. That's where the 3D toolpaths come in. And to generate the toolpaths, you use so-called strategies. And these basically are different automated systems that will analyze certain selected parts of your model and then create toolpaths to it. Now, the most simple one is just to follow an outline. Then you select an edge around, for example, the square I talked about earlier. You can just select the outside square and say, the tool is gonna stay outside that square and cut around it. That would be a very simple tool toolpath. But you could also um, have maybe clearing the inner part of that. And that maybe you would still just select the edge of the inner part, but you, you would use something like a 2D pocket or a 2D adaptive clearing, which are different ways that the tool is gonna go into that square we wanna cut out and cut it out. 
Now, 2D Adaptive is kind of the way to go whenever you can, because it's a very smart toolpath. It tries to load up your tool with always a nice amount of chips and it's not gonna just suddenly run into a solid wall which would, which would uh, throw your machine off and give you a risk of losing steps, but it's gonna go in gradually whenever it can and so it kind of thinks quite a bit. Now the toolpaths look a bit funny and maybe not as nice with 2D Adaptive or 3D Adaptive for that matter, but they are a lot better on your machine. But feel free to experiment with the other strategies and there you can also research some more on YouTube as it is, is quite a big topic and very hard to learn. I myself am nowhere near an expert. I'm just still experimenting and learning on the different strategies. Now, once you selected a strategy, you're nowhere near done. You just gave the basic principle how you want to convert whatever you selected into a toolpath. But you also need to add quite a lot of other parameters. Like the main ones are of course like how fast the spindle is supposed to turn, provided you, your machine can adjust that automatically, how fast you move around, how fast you plunge down or um, go in helixes to go into things. These can all be adjusted individually and so you have quite a lot of control. You can also either choose to the entire depth in one pass or you can split it up in multiple paths if you can't do everything in once because your machine isn't strong enough. Also things like automatic cooling and and or tool changes, if you have an automatic tool changer, you will adjust this in these more detailed settings. There are also quite a bit more, more detailed settings which you, for the most part as a beginner, can leave at a default. But if you have some problems or you want something special, you can adjust, for example, how high it goes up. Or if you have only a 2D image, the heights are very important as this is where you define how deep the tool is gonna go as the, from the 2D image it doesn't know it. And then after you have created all these different parameters, in most CAM software there is a function to simulate what you did. And this is very useful as you can see how the machine is gonna move later without having to waste a strap or actually use a machine. You can fast forward through it, slow down and look very closely to see if the computer calculated what you wanted it to do. And then after your computer has calculated all the paths, you need to export it to, so that your machine controller can understand it. And that's called the pulse processing. There you have to select what kind of controller your machine is using, because while G-code is kind of the universal standard for all CNC machines, each controller understands a slightly different kind of G-code, has some different commands to turn on, like the spindle coolant or whatever, so you're gonna have to select the right one so it's compatible with your machine. In the post processors you can also adjust some other settings that are specially for your machine, like acceleration or special speeds or turning on and off and tool changes and all of that stuff. You can adjust kind of at a lower level inside the post processor. That's especially important if you have built your machine yourself. And for example, I added my laser and to turn it on and off I use the, the CNC plasma thing, but instead of one and zero, I need like 3000 and zero. So that's something that I was able to change inside the post processor. And then after the post processor, you get a G code file. And this G code file is what the machine can later read. But if you want to know more about the G code and the process that comes after it, you can check out my next video and if it's already up, it's gonna be linked up here in the i and the first links down below, so you can check that out. 
Also, if you like this video, you can leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe to don't miss the second part or any other videos. I also have a second channel where I post behind the scenes and other things about my life. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out as well. And my social media accounts, of course, are linked down below. So thanks for watching and until next time.